recorded from an earlier broadcast. Concerts, Larry Gatlin and the Gatlin Brothers. Our hostess from the hit series Knots Landing, Joan Van Ark. And the star of The Price is Right, one of America's favorite television personalities. Training Command Choir. Yeah. 
Ladies and gentlemen, our host for this evening, Bob Barker. that opening production number, huh? Have you, have you ever seen so many people on one stage? If there had been one more Gatlin brother, we'd never have made it. Do you know that? I want to welcome you to the 32nd annual Miss USA pageant, which comes to you from Knoxville, Tennessee. Yes, sir. Knoxville, Tennessee, in the foothills of the magnificent Great Smoky Mountains. Now, last year, Knoxville had the fair, and this year it has the fairest. Fifty-one of the loveliest young women in our country compete for the title of Miss USA. Our winner will receive prizes totaling more than $150,000 in cash and merchandise and the opportunity to represent our country in the Miss Universe pageant to be held July 11th in St. Louis, Missouri. Now, during tonight's pageant, the judges' votes will be tabulated in our computer here and you will be kept up to date on the results of that voting. Of course, you're invited to keep your own scores at home and see if you can pick the new Miss USA before the judge's decision is announced. We'll be explaining our areas of judging as well as how the voting is done, but first, let's meet our 51 candidates, starting with Miss Alabama. Terry Lane, Birmingham, Alabama. Amy Harms, Fairbanks, Alaska. Cindy Hatton, Tucson. Julie Hyatt, Westwood, California. Lisa Trujillo, Denver, Colorado. Mary Lynn Sullivan, Terryville, Connecticut. Shelly Perkins, Newark, Delaware. Julie Warner, District of Columbia. Janet Chester, Daytona Beach, Florida. Dotsie Teal, Augusta, Georgia. Zoran Rhodes, Honolulu, Hawaii. Carrie Damiano, Cardinal Lane, Idaho. contestant it will be, but you have just met the new Miss USA. Hi, y'all. I'm Joan Van Ark, and this
this year I've come from my Knott's Landing cul-de-sac all the way to Knoxville, Tennessee to be your hostess once again for another Miss USA pageant. And what an exciting honor it is. It's an exciting evening for me for a lot of reasons. First of all, it's live, it's entertaining, and most of all, at the end of this evening, we're all going to know who the new Miss USA is going to be. Now, our official decision is going to be reached by this distinguished panel of celebrity judges, which you see right here. You're going to meet them in a little while, but first, I'd like to tell you how they'll go about registering their choices in each of the three areas of judging, which is swimsuits, evening gowns, and personal interviews. Each judge has a terminal, just like this one right here. The score that each judge gives each girl, anything from, say, a one to a... 9.99 is punched into this terminal which goes to our computer. The computer then tabulates an average composite score for each candidate in each category. After determining first our 12 semi-finalists and then our five finalists, the judges will of course pick our new Miss USA. Now I'm going to be telling you throughout the telecast about the scoring results as the computer tabulates them, but the audience here in the theater, the judges right here, and the contestants will not know the scores that you and I know. That's just going to be between you and me. So I'll be keeping you posted on the scoring. I'll tell you a little bit about the pageant. I'll be talking with some of the people who are here tonight. And like you, I'm going to be trying to guess who the winner will be. But right now, we have a very special swimsuit event coming up right after this word from Tide. The judging process for our pageant has been going on for this past week, and our panel here has observed each of our young ladies in the three areas of competition, the swimsuits, evening gowns, and personal interviews, and has already chosen our 12 semifinalists. Which 12? Well, why don't you take a look at each of our candidates in their fashion swimwear from J.C. Penney's Miss USA collection, and as you watch, you'll see on your screen the score the judges gave each contestant in the preliminary swimsuit competition. Okay, Bob? Thank you, Joan. The beautiful countryside of eastern Tennessee provides some stunning backgrounds for the 51 contestants in this year's quest for the title of Miss USA. Downtown Knoxville itself is our first stop, right next to the site of tonight's pageant, in fact. The waters come from the Civic Auditorium Fountain, and our first two ladies come from places which indicate the scope of our pageant. Miss Mississippi is Becky Case, and with her is Amy Renee Harms, who is Miss Alaska. A lady from Paris and a gift from Providence. Deborah Baltz, Miss Arkansas, is from Paris, Arkansas, and Allegra Hendricks, Miss Rhode Island, is from Providence. From neighboring states in the Northwest came Miss Montana, Barbara Jean Bowman, and Miss Idaho, Carrie Damiano. Joining us now are a Tar Heel and a Nutmegger. Miss North Carolina is Paige Pinson. And Mary Lynn Selliman is Miss Connecticut. And before saying goodbye to this fountain, we say hello to Miss New York, Jennifer Ann Michael Lynch, and Jill Rigsby, Miss West Virginia. The Little River is in Great Smoky Mountain National Park, and at one point, the river has caused an erosion, which resulted in recesses known around here as the sinks. It's there that we meet our next group, starting with Miss Utah, Lana Lewis. From the Great Lakes to the Little River comes Miss Michigan, Kim Mexica. Representing our nation's capital is Miss District of Columbia, Julie Warner. A huge rock serves as the stark background for Miss North Dakota, Elizabeth Ann Jager. From the Show Me State, we show you Miss Missouri, Robin Elizabeth Riley. It's time now to move upstream a little, but first we greet Joni Engstrom, who is Miss Wyoming. The cascading waters lead us to what might be described as beauty on the rocks. Here is Miss Nevada, Krista Elaine Daniel, Miss Nebraska, Penny Boynton, and Miss Oklahoma, Mignon Merchant. The rushing river provides the background for two lovely Westerners. Miss Texas is Lisa Allred, and Miss California is Julie Hayek. And our last twosome at this beautiful site are Miss Colorado, Lisa Trujillo, and Miss Kentucky, Leanne Austin. If you're among those who visited the Knoxville World's Fair last year, you'll remember the Court of Flags, where the waters of the world provide a backdrop for our next group of contestants. Starting with Miss Hawaii, Zoanne Roach, and 
Miss Pennsylvania, Julie Page. This twosome comes from Dixie and New England. Miss Georgia is Dotsie Tim. And Lynn Toby Stockwell is Miss New Hampshire. These two ladies didn't have to travel far to get to our pageant. Allison Grisso is Miss South Carolina. And from our host state, LaDonna Friday, Miss Tennessee. The Atlantic Coast and the Great Southwest are combined here in Miss Virginia, A. Collins, and Miss Arizona, Cindy Hedden. And our final greetings at this World's Fair site go to Miss Delaware, who is Shelley Perkins, and Miss South Dakota, Kelly Rosenbaum. The rough water becomes tranquil at our next stop, the golf course at Fairfield Glade, a residential community west of Knoxville, where we see a Hoosier and a Buckeye. Miss Indiana is Tony Marie Ute. And Miss Ohio is Gina Gangal. The dogwood adds to the beautiful setting for these candidates from opposite corners of the country. Miss Florida, Janet Chesser, and Miss Washington, Kathy Tucker. Our next contestants are from neighboring states. This is Miss Wisconsin, Susan Peters. And this is Miss Illinois, Vanessa Romai. Southeast of Knoxville at Pigeon Forge, we come to this quaint old grist mill where an old-fashioned water wheel provides a colorful background for Miss Oregon, Shelley Gaylene Kaiser, and Miss Louisiana, Pamela Forrest. From the rock-bound coast and the tall corn country come this duet. Miss Maine is Rosemary Heeman. Miss Iowa is Dana Ruth Mincer. And crossing this bridge over untroubled waters, we find Miss Minnesota, Carolyn Matson, and Miss Alabama, Terry Lane. What's nicer than a waterfall? Why, a lot of waterfalls combined with pretty ladies. That's what we find along the Roaring Fork Motor Nature Trail in the mountains above Gatlinburg. It's there that we meet Miss New Jersey, Anne Marie Brucato, and Sean Keller, who is Miss Maryland. A waterfall and a robin. Robin Sylvia is Miss Massachusetts. From Santa Fe to Gatlinburg is the path taken by Miss New Mexico, Kristen Larson. Finally, a couple of Capricorns. First, Miss Kansas, Renee Rook. And our last contestant, Leslie Caroline Lucina, Miss Vermont. Our 51 young ladies end this tour of Eastern Tennessee by being all together at the United States Pavilion of last year's World's Fair in Knoxville. The architecture of this pavilion was honored for its design, but it's difficult to imagine that it ever looked better than it does adorned with this year's candidates for the title of Miss USA. Having seen all those lovely young ladies, you can tell that it was not an easy job for our judges to narrow the field to 12, but they did it. After observing the candidates this past week, competing in swimsuits, evening gowns, and personal interviews, they gave each young woman a point score in each category. Those scores were all fed into the computer, each young woman received an average score, and the 12 highest became our semi-finalists. Now, while I pick up the computer printout, please welcome our young ladies in their lovely sportswear ensembles made especially for them by P.R. Donovan. Here they are. Now, before I read these names, which will be in no particular order, I'd like to say good luck to all 51 of you. Good luck to you. Here we go. Here we go with the first name on the list, and I'll bet you're going to like Miss Georgia. You'll 
see her score at home on your television set, but we do not see it here. Now we're going to fur piece for Miss Washington. We're going to fetch Miss California. What do you folks think of Miss North Dakota? And now, come on down, Miss Michigan. And now we're halfway there. Number six on the list of 12 semifinalists is Miss Texas. And from not far away comes Miss South Carolina. Here comes Miss Nevada. And we want Miss Oklahoma. Here we are at number 10, and number 10 is Miss New York. Check her score at home. And we have only two names left on the list of 12 semi-finalists. One of those names is Miss Louisiana. And now, one last name. Only one more girl who has a chance to become Miss USA. She is Miss Pennsylvania! Congratulations to our 12 semifinalists, one of whom will be our new Miss USA. have now become 12. And the computer tells us, I believe here we have it, thank you, Mr. Slocum, Miss Texas is first, second place was Miss California, and third place was Miss Washington. Now the pageant is brand new again with our 12 semifinalists all even in the scoring. Their competition starts when Bob interviews each of them, and that begins after this word from Ivory Liquid. Now I 
I am about to interview each of our 12 semi-finalists, a part of our pageant which I particularly enjoy. The young ladies don't know the questions and nobody knows what the answers will be. Over the years, it's been a part of the pageant that has provided some insights and also some surprises. At the end of each interview, our television audience will see the contestants' average score in this part of the competition. Now, I remind you that the scores will not be seen by our panel or our contestants or our audience here in the theater. The Miss USA interview competition begins with you, Miss Georgia. Come right over here to me. She is Dotsie Tim. She lives in Augusta. She's 22 years old, and she attends the Medical College of Georgia. And what are you studying, Miss Georgia? Studying to become an occupational therapist. And what does an occupational therapist do? We do a little bit of everything. <laughs> What's the next step in your training? I hope to work after I graduate and possibly go back and get my graduate degree. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you say that you do a little bit of everything, uh, you do work on the human body, do yes, you? Yes, sir, we do. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you do to the human body? <laughs> Different things. <laughs> <laughs> Therapy. Judges, I hope you are not judging her on accuracy here. <laughs> well, how about the trip from Georgia? Did you have a nice trip? How'd you get here? I flew. It was my first flight, so it was quite an experience for me. Your first flight? Did yes. they lose your luggage? No, I didn't have any mishaps. Good. Well, I hope you enjoy your visit to Knoxville. I'm sure you will. Thank, Thank you, you. Miss Georgia. <laughs> to see her score, and we will ask Miss Washington to step out here. She is Kathy Tucker. She lives in Renton. She's 21. She attends Eastern Washington University. And what do you study? Business communications. And what are your plans for the future? I'd like to complete my education and possibly go on to radio and television. And I read in your bio that you are a seagull for the C Seattle Seahawks professional football team, and you're the mascot of the Carrier Enterprise. Yes, sir. Now, what does a seagull do for the Seahawks? They perform at the Seahawk games. We are called seagulls. And you cheer them on. Right. And the way that team is going, you better cheer a little louder. Hey, huh? we're we got a new coach, and he's going to really show us. What do you us. do as the mascot of the Carrier Enterprise? Well, I've never met any of the the Navy people yet, I write to them a lot and just let them know how much we do appreciate all the things they do for us. You write to the sailors? Yes, on the... sir. I guess I was in the Navy at the wrong time. Our mascot was a goat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Miss Washington. All right, Miss California, let's talk it over. She is Julie Hayek. She lives in Westwood. She's 22. She's a senior at UCLA. And what do you study? Psychobiology. What is psychobiology? I know you do a lot of things, but what is it? <laughs> it's a combination of a psychology and biology major, and it relates the mind to the body. Yes. Now, <laughs> what do you hope to do someday? I want to be a dentist. And most pre Why didn't you say you wanted to be a dentist? How did you decide you wanted to be a dentist? Well, I like working with people, and I like working with my hands, and I think I'd like the responsibility. And when you were a little girl, you saw your daddy write the check to the dentist, and you knew you wanted to be a I dentist. Knew. <laughs> you bet. All right, thank you, Miss California. <laughs> see her score at home, but we do not see it here, and now Miss North Dakota. Miss North Dakota is Elizabeth Ann Jager. She lives in Fargo. She is 23. She is a senior at Moorhead State University in Minnesota. And what is your major? I'm an art major there. Now, I read that you have been accepted at the Chicago Art Institute. Is that true? That's true. Well, you should be very proud. That's one of the most prestigious uh, schools of that sort in the country, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes. Now, you have come a long way from North Dakota to be here. What comments do you have to make about Southern hospitality? Oh, Southern hospitality is wonderful. They cook us. <laughs> they cook us homemade breakfast and homemade lunch and homemade supper and everything's... What are some of these homemade things they've been fixing for you? Well, the grits that you asked about earlier today. <laughs> in, in rehearsal, I, I mentioned grits. That's true. And you love grits, don't you? Oh, with all my heart. <laughs> 
Thank you, Miss North Dakota. Miss Michigan, get on over here. She is Kim Mexico. She lives in Livonia. She's 21. She models and teaches aerobics. But what would you like to do in the future? What do you want to do, Miss Michigan? Uh, my ultimate goal for a career is to own my own health spa. Now, you were on a modeling assignment in Paris, France with yes. Miss South Carolina, weren't you? Yes, we lived together for a month. And I heard a story about a, some singing that you did over there <laughs> for profit. Why don't you tell the audience about that? Okay, we were there in July, and it was the 4th of July, and all Americans wanted to celebrate, so we went down to the Metro, which is the buses that take you all over, and three of us, another girl from Louisiana, sang all the American songs, and people threw us money. <laughs> <laughs> and if you missed that concert, their album will be out soon. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Michigan. <laughs> Next, we'll meet you, Miss Texas. She is Lisa Allred. She lives in Fort Worth. She's 21. She's a student at North Texas State University, and she was the winner of Miss Photogenic, incidentally. Now, what... What do you study? I study fashion merchandising at North Texas State University in Denton. Now, but you have left school temporarily because right. of so much, uh, right. you have so many responsibilities, Miss mm -hmm. Texas. Have you done a lot of traveling? Yes, I have. I just finished a five-week tour through the state of Texas, and I've also got to do some international traveling, went Where'd to you London. Go? London? Mm-hmm. What did the British ask Miss Texas? <laughs> what sort of questions did they ask? They wanted to know if I knew J.R. First question. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet they did. Everyone wants to know that. Yes, Thank I told them I did. So. Thank you, Miss Texas. <laughs> See Miss Texas's score. And you have met half of our semifinalists. How about it, you armchair judges? Is one of them going to be the new Miss USA? calm time in the hectic backstage life of this telecast, this live telecast. Woo! Whoa, just like on Knott's Landing, everybody pushes me around. You see this 40-watt bulb right here, just like the ones you have at home? Well, to light this stage, it would take nearly 11,000 of these. And of course, there are colors, too. You want a blue? No problem. Give me a blue! See? You want a red? No problem, either. Hey, uh, give them a red. Piece of cake. You probably thought I could only control the lights. Well, you're wrong. Watch this. Let the waters dance. Fun. <laughs> now, you're probably wondering, is there anything that this woman can't do? Yep. She can't tell you how the rest of the interview competition will go, but you can find that out for yourselves right after this word from Loves. Fit him comfortably. We've had a chance to meet six of our semi-finalists, and now it's time to talk with the other six, beginning with you, Miss South Carolina. She was in Paris with Miss Michigan. She is Allison Grisso. She lives in Columbia. She's 21. She's a model, and I understand you have worked in many places. Where have you modeled? Yes, I have been to the Philippines, to Caracas, Venezuela, and to Europe. I understand from your chaperones, as a matter of fact, that you've been receiving a lot of telephone calls from Caracas, Venezuela. Is that regarding a, a modeling assignment? Well, yes, I have been modeling there, doing a lot of modeling, and I also have a special someone there. I got that information from your chaperone that there was a special someone, and it's costing this special person hundreds of dollars to keep up on your activities here. Uh, yes, I went down with the visa yesterday. <laughs> How did you meet this gentleman? Well, it was a blind date. I uh, met him through a friend of mine in New York. How many of you guys have ever gone on a blind date and ended up with someone who looked like this, huh? <laughs> There's one hand up, and he does not have an honest face back there. Well, I bet your special gentleman in Caracas is watching right now by satellite because uh, uh, the show is seen in various places live. Would you, do you speak any Spanish? Si, sí, senor. Say something, <laughs> beautiful, yeah. Say something to him in Spanish. Hola, como estas? Hello, how are you? 
No, that's not what she said. What she said is, this is big orange country. That's what she said. refers to the Tennessee University football team. Now, I am going to talk with Miss Nevada, who is Krista Elaine Daniel, 18 years old, Las Vegas. And listen to this. She is a senior in high school, she is an automobile mechanic, and she is a magician's assistant. Well, let's start with the uh, high school. Now, if you're a senior in high school, you're missing a lot of things right now. How about exams? I'm missing all my uh, exams, but I'll be taking them as soon as I get back in school. And the senior prom? I missed it. And have you been studying since you've been here? No, <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. Have you written all your papers for the year and everything? Yeah. Have you? Uh -huh. Good. I was hoping you could go home and write on the social significance of grits <laughs> after tonight. Uh, well, no. What about uh, being an automobile mechanic? Now, what, was, what does that refer to? I work on my own car. Well, can you honestly fix your own car? Uh-huh. Well, you know, if you become Miss USA, you'll have a, a chauffeur-driven limousine. But if it breaks down, it'll be no problem for no, you, right? I can just fix it. <laughs> and you're a magician's assistant? Yes. Tell us about that. I am David Copperfield, magician. I'm his assistant. Oh, I've David been... Copperfield? Yes. Wow. I've been his assistant since January. If you are David Copperfield's assistant, you'll know exactly what to do when I say, presto changeo, abacadabra. Disappear. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> It is Miss Oklahoma next. She is Mignon Merchant. She lives in Oklahoma City. She's 21. She's a senior at the University of Oklahoma. And what is your major at the university? Journalism. And I read that you won Southwest Journalism Conference Award first place. Right. Tell us about that. I won a first place award for sports writing. And what did you write about? Uh, the Russian national wrestling team came oh, to Oklahoma, really? and they wrestled a national team from around the United States in Norman, where our school is. And I covered the event and did a feature on the differences between wrestling in the United States and wrestling in the Soviet Union. Well, what were your impressions of these Russian wrestlers? They were very nice, very jovial, very excited to be in America. They liked Western clothes very much. Uh -huh. Are you going to write anything about the pageant? As a matter of fact, I am. I'm doing a piece for our alumni newspaper on how the press has been covering the you event. You are. Mm -hmm. If you do write something, remember it's Barker. B-A-R-K-E-R. -E okay. no. okay. Thank you. <laughs> Check her score and talk with Miss New York. Miss New York is Jennifer Ann Michaelinich of Huntington, Long Island. She's 20. She's an account executive for a sportswear firm. But what would you like to do in the future? I'd like to go back to school to be an elementary school teacher because I hold somewhere in my heart a very special fondness for small children. Good for you. Now, you have come quite a way here from New York. Uh, have you traveled much? Well, about four years ago, I had a very large opportunity to travel with my family. For three months, they took me out of school, and we toured the entire coast of the United States in a travel trailer. Oh, my goodness. That is a big trip. What was your favorite place all along the coast? Probably California. What did you like in California? It's a lot like, like New York. It's fast-paced, and people dress basically the same. They just hang out in their shorts and sloppy and... <laughs> Miss California and I thank you no very offense. much no for the way you've summed us up. <laughs> thank you, Miss New York. <laughs> Miss Louisiana, I'd like to talk with you. She's Pamela Forrest. She lives in Baton Rouge. She's 20. She is a model. She's a busy girl. She's a model, a modeling instructor, and she's studying acting. Now, if you're a model and an actress, we've been talking about assignments. What are some of the things that you've done, Miss Louisiana? I do a lot of convention and promotional work, and I've been in a few films that they film throughout Louisiana. What film? The Toy. I was a cheerleader, and Dixie, I was an extra there, so I'm just really starting out. I'm studying it. Have you done any commercials? Uh, yes, a few local commercials. What sort of things have you done? For dress shops and other products at home, billboards and things like that. 
Did you have speaking lines in the movie? Yes. Did you? Yes, What'd you I had say? two, and they both got edited out. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> poor baby, you're just edited out again. Goodbye. <laughs> Miss Pennsylvania. She is Julie Page. She lives in Val Vernon. She's 18. She's a senior in high school, and she won Best State Costume. Now, you are about to graduate from high school, Miss Pennsylvania. What do you plan to do? I plan to attend Syracuse University. What do you want to study? I would like to study a dual major in marketing and design. Now, you're down here in Knoxville, Tennessee, and this is not only, I'm almost afraid to say it because we'll get that cheer, big orange country, but it's also, it's also, it's also country music country. Now, have you heard any country music? Yes, I have. I especially enjoy the Gatlin Brothers Do because you? I've got to meet them personally. Have and you ever bought a Gatlin Brothers record? Yes, I did. As soon as I found out that the Gatlin Brothers were going to be on here, I told my mom. She went to the store and she bought all their albums. All of them? <laughs> Old Larry's going to be able to buy a new guitar pick, uh, thanks to your mama. Thank you, Miss Pennsylvania. <laughs> Our judges, both our panel here and you armchair judges at home, have observed our 12 semi-finalists in the interview competition. And I have only one more question to ask, and that's directed to you right there at home. Have you changed your mind, or are you sticking with your first choice? <laughs> competition concluded we have two more steps evening gowns and swimsuits before our 12 semi-finalists become our five finalists and the computer here tells us that the first place gal was miss texas second place was north dakota and third was miss california ahead are the other two competitions but before that we're going to meet our panel of celebrity judges and hear from some very talented citizens of tennessee larry gatlin and the gatlin brothers that's right after this word from secret the official antiperspirant of the 19 1983 Miss USA pageant. As we said, here in Tennessee, you hear country music just about everywhere you go. But wherever you hear country music, anywhere in the United States, you're sure to hear something that's been written, played, and sung by our next guest. But their music is not limited to country charts, as they show us tonight, singing their million-selling smash hit, All the Gold in California. Larry Gatlin and the Gatlin Brothers. is in a bank in the middle of Beverly Hills in somebody else's name. So if you're dreaming about California, it don't matter at all where you played before. California's a brand new game. Try Somebody 
There they are, Larry Gatlin and the Gatlin Brothers. And now it is time to meet our distinguished panel of celebrity judges who have worked so diligently for the past week. We say thank you first to an internationally acclaimed actress and singer who has gained new recognition as an author of the best-selling novel, Night Sanctuary, Monique Van Voren. He is a nationally syndicated critic journalist who covers the world of television and is the chief critic for TV Key, which is distributed by more than 250 newspapers nationwide. John Goodis. She's now a successful model and television actress who has already appeared on the CBS daytime drama As the World Turns, and yet it was only one year ago that she concluded her reign as Miss USA. Kim Silbury. Our next judge was an outstanding running back for the Cornell football team before moving on to play six years in the National Football League. Today is known to millions of television viewers as Officer Joe Coffey in the hit series Hill Street Blues, Ed Marinero. A live daily radio program, constant trips to both coasts, and writing for one of the most influential daily columns in America make up the hectic schedule of the Houston Chronicle's Maxine Messenger. A Broadway, Hollywood, and television star who has also directed for the theater. He is probably best known for his portrayal of Dr. Treves in both the Broadway and television productions of The Elephant Man. Kevin Conway! After being crowned Miss USA 1976, our next judge completed her college education and was named one of the Outstanding Young Women of America. In addition to being a civic activist, she is now a member of the Board of Directors of Proform Incorporated. She is Barbara Peterson Burwell. Looking ahead to his sixth season in the National Football League after an outstanding college career at the University of Nebraska, here is the star quarterback of the Los Angeles Rams, Vince Ferragamo. Star of Morning Stretch, her own widely syndicated TV fitness show, who has made a best-selling record on exercise. She is the director of fitness programs for Elaine Powers. Please welcome Joni Greggins. He not only inherited one of the legendary names in the world of magic, he has brought additional luster to it. He has amazed audiences in top nightclubs and hotels, on television, and in his own show on Broadway. He is Harry Blackstone, Jr. In a 30-year career as a drummer, composer, and band leader, he has always kept his music fresh, exciting, and controversial. One of the all-time giants in the world of jazz, Chico Hamilton. And all of us say thank you, judges. Miss USA 1980, and we're in the dressing room where our semifinalists are getting ready for their swimsuit competition. Tell me, is this a nervous time for the young ladies, Janine? I'd say right now they're a little more excited than nervous. Nervous comes when Bob is announcing the names of the 12 semifinalists. Well, do you remember how you felt during your pageant at this time? I think the word for it is numb. Completely <laughs> numb. <laughs> well, I want to tell you, you look absolutely stunning tonight in that gown. Oh, thank you. This gown was done for me by the designer Akira, who also did another former Miss USA's gown, Kim Tomes Dutton. 
and this year's Miss USA, Terry Etley, and also Karen Baldwin's this year's Miss Universe. Oh, with their gorgeous gowns. Before we see them in their gowns, though, we're going to be seeing our contestants in their swimsuits. Oh, there they go. Go, girls. The swimsuit competition is coming right up, and it takes place right after this from Cascade. The Miss USA pageant is most appreciative of the support of the citizens, business communities, and governments of cities all across our country who have helped to make the pageant a national event. Tonight, we are proud to have with us as our guests the mayors of three great American cities. From Lakeland, Florida, a city which lays claim to being the citrus capital of the world, Mayor Frank O'Reilly. From our host city of Knoxville, Tennessee, Mayor Randy Tyree. And from St. Louis, where on Monday, July 11th, the 1983 Miss Universe pageant will be held, Mayor Vincent Shamel of St. Louis. Mayor Shamel. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much, and let me pick up another microphone right over here, because I think we've just lost power on this one. Is this one all right now? All right. We're about to have our swimsuit competition, and it's the second of our competitive areas. Each contestant will appear in the official J.C. Penney Miss USA swimsuit. The judges' scores will again be fed into our computer, and the computer, in turn, will come up with an average score for each candidate. That score will appear immediately on the television screens of our home audience. In a setting which pays tribute to the iris, the state flower of Tennessee, we present 12 of our nation's loveliest young women in the Miss USA swimsuit competition. has hazel eyes and blonde hair. She's five feet eight inches tall and weighs 118 pounds. Miss Washington. Five feet, eight inches tall, Kathy weighs 118 pounds. She's 21 years old, has blue eyes and blonde hair. Miss California. is a green-eyed blonde. She's 22 years old, 5 feet 10 inches tall, and weighs 125 pounds. Miss North Dakota. Elizabeth is 23 years old, 5 feet 7 and a half inches tall, and weighs 123 pounds. Her eyes are green and her hair is black. Miss Michigan! Five feet eight inches tall, Kim weighs 125 pounds. 
She has blue eyes and brown hair and is 21 years old. Lisa is a blue-eyed blonde. She's 21 years old, 5 feet 7 inches tall, and weighs 115 pounds. Miss South Carolina. Twenty-one-year-old Allison has blonde hair and green eyes. She weighs 115 pounds and is five feet seven inches tall. Nevada. Twenty-year-old Jennifer has brown eyes and blonde hair. She's five feet eight and a half inches tall and weighs a hundred and eighteen pounds. Oklahoma. Minion is 21 years old, 5 feet 7 inches tall, and weighs 118 pounds. She has green eyes and black hair. New York. I think this is Miss Nevada, and this is Krista, who has blonde hair and green eyes. She's 18 years old, weighs 125 pounds, and she's 5 feet 9 inches tall. will be <laughs> Miss X. I hope it's Louisiana. You're right, Bob, it's Louisiana. Pamela is 20 years old, 5 feet 9 inches tall, and weighs 130 pounds. She has blonde hair and hazel eyes. And now come out whoever you are. <laughs> Miss Pennsylvania. Julie is a green-eyed blonde. She's 5 feet 6 inches tall, weighs 110 pounds, and is 18 years old. semi-finalists in tonight's swimsuit competition.
contestants fill out a questionnaire before the pageant, and one of the questions is, who do you think is the greatest person in the world? Well, there was a tie for the first place this year. Eight contestants answered Pope John Paul II, while eight others answered my mother. Congratulations to all those moms. Yeah, give them a hand. Okay. Now, two-thirds of the semifinal competition has now been completed, and in our swimsuit competition, the first place went to Miss California, second place was Miss Texas, and third place was Miss Nevada. Ahead, now we have a country music classic with our contestants and Larry Gatlin and the Gatlin Brothers. After this word from Safeguard. With the title of Miss USA goes tremendous prestige as well as the opportunity to represent our country in the Miss Universe pageant, which will be telecast live from St. Louis on July 11. And there is more, much more, including $90,000 in cash. Miss USA's prize package, totaling more than $150,000 in cash and merchandise, includes a $25,000 personal appearance contract, a $15,000 first prize award, as well as all of the sensational prizes Joan is going to describe for us. This year's Miss USA and a companion will fly first class to any eastern destination of her choice. Whether it's a trip to the beautiful beaches of Florida or the Caribbean or an adventure exploring the splendor of South America, she'll fly eastern, America's favorite way to fly. Our contestants love candies, the shoes that say lifestyle. They're for girls on the move. Miss USA gets a wardrobe of candies plus $5,000 in cash. Nice footwork if you can get it. A $10,000 cash award from North American Philips plus from Magnavox, the new 40-inch projection TV, from Odyssey, this keyboard video game and voice module, from Sylvania, the Mini 25 Superset and Video Disc, and from Philco, a portable video cassette recorder. Miss USA will find fun and relaxation not only on land, but also on the water when she drives her Wellcraft 166 Elite, which has a 140 Mercruiser engine and a Magic Tilt trailer. All from Wellcraft Marine Corporation. Along with $5,000 in cash, to our winner goes a year's supply of Hawaiian Tropic natural tanning lotions and oils. From across the Pacific, Hawaiian Tropic, the scent of the coconut, the tan of the islands. To this year's winner goes her symbol of elegance, her beautiful crown, plus a $5,000 cash award and an exquisite collection of jewelry, all from Aubrey Creations. One of America's most popular 2 plus 2 sporty cars, from Chevrolet comes this beautiful new Camaro Z28, which combines beautiful styling with driving fun. You too can take charge in the 1983 Chevrolet Camaro. This home computer combines 64K computing power, an extensive library of software, and even a special help key, all in one attractive package. This welcome addition to any home is the 1200XL from Atari. Miss USA will receive a $10,000 cash award and a five-year membership to any one of the 350 fitness centers across the country where she can enjoy the new Power Size program from Elaine Powers. Our new Miss USA will receive $10,000 in cash plus a five-year supply of cosmetics from Maybelline, the official cosmetics for the 1983 Miss USA pageant. Tonight's winner, as befits a Miss USA, will be able to arrive anywhere in style, wearing a beautiful, natural, Emba Lunarine mink coat from the internationally famous Flemington Fur Company. This stunning, cascading, pleat of silk Garza gown, along with these other dresses, are part of a spectacular $10,000 cocktail and evening wardrobe, all designed by New York's noted couturier, Akira, and are Akira's gift to the lady being toasted here, the new Miss USA. Eastern Tennessee has sent us some of the giants of country music. Roy Acuff, Dolly Parton, and Chet Atkins, just to name a few who came from these parts. Our young ladies have prepared a number built around one of the all-time great country songs. And they have a country music superstar threesome to help them do it justice. In their Miss USA sportswear from J.C. Penney, here are our 51 contestants, Larry Gatlin and the Gatlin Brothers and Rocky Top.
That's life for our ladies during most of the two-week pageant period. Things like, whoa, rehearsals, fittings, interviews, and photo sessions take up most of their time. That's most, but not all. There was time for some fun, too, as you shall see. <laughs> Many of the contestants in this year's pageant traveled on Eastern's new Boeing 757, including Miss USA 1982, Terry Utley. Eastern is the official airline of the 1983 Miss USA pageant, and it carried the ladies to a brass band flag-waving airport reception. Silver Dollar City is a theme park which highlights the culture, past and present, of the Knoxville area. His name is Charlie Fuller, and he's an artist with a hammer and an anvil. Knowing of our young lady's interest in clothes, he is busy making them a most appropriate gift. Miss Hawaii watches closely as Charlie's work takes shape. The result becomes a gift for Miss Nevada, and Miss Wyoming promptly puts it to the test. There are no hang-ups for our ladies when it comes to dancing. They were invited to watch some young cloggers, but before long, they wanted to do more than just watch. They wanted to test their shoes from candies on the dance floor, and the cloggers were anxious to oblige. Grab Your Partners became the name of the game, and before long, the contestants were really kicking up their heels and making a pretty picture at the same time. Speaking of pictures, the next stop was a television assembly line at North American Phillips, where Miss South Carolina found it tough to keep up. If your picture is blurry, maybe she worked on your set. As three of her fellow contestants examine some sets, they are surprised by Miss Mississippi not on television, but in television. In the waters of the Great Smoky Mountains, four of our contestants try their luck at some white water rafting. The secret of not going around in circles is teamwork which seems to be in short supply. For active fun like this, they've chosen J.C. Penney's Miss USA Active Wear. While in another part of the river, Miss Vermont tries her hand at fishing from the rocks, and two of her friends challenge the fish in their own territory. When Miss Marilyn needed a hand, Miss Kansas provided two without losing her fishing pole. Tennessee is the volunteer state, so the University of Tennessee football team volunteered to teach our young ladies the game. But never underestimate the Miss USA contestants. Third down, three yards to go, and Miss Indiana sweeps wide. If her beauty doesn't dazzle them, her footwork will. A good run, but just short of a first down. Tie score, and our team needs a field goal to win. The kick is up, and it's good. 
player's charcoal may be essential for victory on the gridiron, but in the life of a young lady, a different kind of eye makeup is called for. That's what was discussed by our contestants during the makeup clinic held for them annually by the official cosmetics of the 1983 Miss USA pageant, Maybelline. And then it's back to dancing. This time, it's the modern steps at 2001 VIP, a disco. For our contestants from mountain streams to disco dance floors, fun is where you find it. Larry, uh, have the Gatlin brothers decided who the judge's choice should be? Well, my personal, uh, the way I did it, I chose, I just eliminated everyone who was not either from east or west of the Mississippi. Those I are my see, friends. good choice. Now, what well, about the other guys? I have no idea what. Oh, definitely one of the girls from the south. Oh, yeah, good. Nah. The south. No. How about the west? Well, well hey, what, or these. Wait a minute, I'll tell you something pretty. Yeah, wait, 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 wait a minute, guys. Uh, maybe you're going to have a better idea after the evening gown competition, guys. Hold it down a minute. It comes up right after this word from Duncan Hines. Guys, guys, please. And now we come to the third and final category of our semifinalist competition, the evening gowns. The background for that competition will be Knoxville, Tennessee. In this competition, each contestant models a gown of her own choosing, and the judges will base their scoring on poise, charm, and a flair for fashion. As in our earlier competitions, the judges' average score for each contestant will appear immediately on your home screens. As is our custom, the pageant is once again delighted to salute Armed Forces Day, which falls this year on May 21st. For our evening gown competition, the Sabre Arch will be formed by the members of the United States Marine Honor Guard. The Naval Air Training Command Choir, in addition to escorting our contestants, will also serenade them with a special medley, beginning with the Oscar-winning theme from the film An Officer and a Gentleman. We present the Miss USA Evening Gown Competition. Georgia is the way I feel when it's real. I keep it alive. The road is long. There are mountains in our way, but we climb a step. Washington. Dakota. Text. 
Texas. South Carolina. Oklahoma. Pennsylvania. show. Now you've been right here for all of our semi-final competition and what our judges have seen and heard is exactly what you have seen and heard. Now in the evening gown competition our judges gave the top score to Miss Texas, second place was Miss California and third place was Miss Louisiana. Now our contestants are about to go from 12 semi-finalists down to five finalists. Do you think your choices are going to agree with those of our judges? Well you better hurry up and make yours because we're going to be right back with theirs after this word from Crisco Oil.
Starting with local and state pageants, thousands and thousands of young women from all over the country decided months ago to pursue a dream that could come true for only one of them. 51 of them made it to our stage here tonight. First, we saw that number go from 51 to 12. Now it's about to change again, this time to five. The computer now has the score for each of our five finalists in each of our categories. The composite score for each will be shown as the young ladies are introduced. Now, I will pick up the names of our five finalists as shown by the computer. Thank you very much. Good luck to all 12 of you. These are the five young ladies from whom Miss USA will come. The name of the first finalist is Miss Louisiana. You will see her score at home. We do not see it in the theater. Finalist number two, Miss Texas. Our third finalist is Miss South Carolina. And now, Miss California. The last girl who has a chance to win the crown tonight is Miss North Dakota. Congratulations, one of you young ladies will represent our country in St. Louis this summer at the Miss Universe pageant. this evening we are starting out brand new the computer scores that you saw for each contestant were the scores that got them this far now we start again with the five finalists all even our judges are going to base their decisions in part on how each contestant answers the question she is about to be asked so let's go Bob now I am about to ask each of our five finalists here a question. I will ask each of them the same question until each young woman's turn comes to answer that question. She will wait inside our completely soundproofed isolation booth here. The answer will of course be spontaneous and unrehearsed. And as each contestant gives her answer, the judges will continue their evaluation. The beautiful young woman in charge of our booth is former Miss USA, Kim Tomes Dutton. Now, Miss Louisiana, I am going to ask you to stay here with me, if you will, please, and answer the question first, and I'll ask you four to step into the soundproof booth so that you cannot hear her answer. In you go. Close the door, Kim. And Miss Louisiana, this is the question that all of you will be asked. Should you win the title of Miss USA, you will be a role model and influence on young girls all over the United States. What would you like to say to them? I would like to say that a good education is very important and that you should get it and you need it. I would like to say to be honest and to try to be a good person and a good American. Thank you, Miss Louisiana. Right over here, please. Now, Miss South Carolina. Miss South Carolina, would you step out to me, please? Here's the question. Should you win the title of Miss USA, you will be a role model and influence on young girls all over the United States. What would you like to say to them? I think it's very important for most young people, um, not just girls, to, to be an individual. I think a lot of people fall into peer pressure and I think it's kind of sad. I think it's very important to be yourself, and I would stress individuality. Thank you, Miss South Carolina. <laughs> Miss Texas. Miss Texas, right down here. Your question. 
Should you win the title of Miss USA, you will be a role model and influence on young girls all over the United States. What would you like to say to them? I'd like to tell them not to be afraid to do what's right, no matter what everyone else is doing, because if you do what's right, God will stand with you, and it only takes one person in God to make a majority. Thank you, Miss Texas. <laughs> Miss California. Here we are. Should you win the title of Miss USA, you will be a role model and influence on young girls all over the United States. What would you like to say to them? I would like to stress the importance of education, both inside and out of school, because education is a way for you to understand yourself better, others better, as well as the world around you. Thank you very much, Miss California. And now, Miss North Dakota. I bet you knew I would call you next, didn't you? I did, yeah. Your question is, should you win the title of Miss USA? You will be a role model and influence on young girls all over the United States. What would you like to say to them? I'd like to tell them that they can mold and sculpt their lives into anything that they would like to, and that their life is their responsibility, and they can make it into anything, and they should just go for their dreams. Thank you, Miss North Dakota. And thank you, ladies. We are now even closer to finding out who will be the new Miss USA. The Knoxville area here calls itself the energy capital of the world. And with the electricity in the air tonight, I have to think that this pageant has added to that reputation. But for a look at the big part that energy plays in this area, we were taken on a tour by the current Miss USA, Terry Utley. Thank you, Joan. Energy was the theme of the 1982 World's Fair in Knoxville, and the theme structure was this sun sphere. It stands at 266 feet tall and is topped by a giant globe made of glass with even a little bit of 24 karat gold. Actually, it not only symbolizes the fair, but in a sense, the entire area of eastern Tennessee, where energy and energy sources play such a big part. laboratory is located about 25 miles from Knoxville in a little town known all over the world, Oak Ridge, a name synonymous with atomic energy. Today, Oak Ridge National Laboratory is a site of giant steps forward in the experimentation and utilization of the laser. With me is Carol Bingham, professor of physics at the University of Tennessee. Professor, besides getting James Bond out of tight scrapes, what can the laser do? Terry, the source of atomic energy is the tiny nucleus of the atom, an entity so small that 100 billion lay in side by side but barely reach across the head of a pen. Because of its location, this laser can be utilized to measure small differences in the shape and size of exotic nuclei produced by heavy ion collisions. Well, I hope that was as clear to you as it was to me. While the laser is a form of harnessed energy, many of Tennessee's waterways have been tamed by the Tennessee Valley Authority, which creates energy through its network of dams. This is North's Dam, which was the first constructed in the TVA system, now celebrating its 50th anniversary. I'm here at one of the newest TVA projects, known as the Raccoon Mountain Pump Storage Plant, which is about six miles from Chattanooga. Those are the four most powerful reversible pump turbines in the world with a total peak capacity of a million and a half kilowatts, almost enough to supply our contestants' hair dryers. This control room is 1,300 feet inside of Raccoon Mountain, and with me is Mr. George Kimmins, TVA's chief engineer. TVA is known throughout the world for its dams, but why build one like this? This is a pump storage project. We use the off-peaking power to pump water to the top of the mountain and generate electricity during our peaking hours. Well, was it a tough construction job? Yes, a tough construction job. The largest dam we've ever built is on top of the mountain. We have about two and a half miles of tunnel in solid rock. Well, I was told it can operate very quickly. We can be on the line in about four minutes as compared with eight hours for one of our fossil plants. You know, all these controls, they look so complicated. Not really complicated. What would happen if I turned this switch? No. I think we better go back to Joan. 
<laughs> well, that's okay, Terry, because back here, we're in the dark, too, but only about who is going to be chosen the new Miss USA. And we'll be getting one last close-up look at our finalists when we come back after this from Pampers. The judges are still evaluating our five finalists, and as a help to them, we're going to treat everyone to a close-up look at the beauty of our contestants. The judges have monitors so that they, like you at home, can see close-ups of our five finalists. Serenading our five finalists will be Larry Gatlin and the Gatlin Brothers. Thank you. I wrote this song for the lady that I think is the most beautiful woman in the whole world. I know she won't mind if I sing it for these lovely ladies. The title's appropriate. It's called Easy on the Eye. It goes like this. Lord, she loves me. And for the life of me, I don't know why. safe until the storms pass by. Lord, she holds me with velvet chains when madness bids me fly. Judges have finished their job, each one having made a choice for fourth, third, second, and first runner-up, and the winner. It won't be long before we know who is the new Miss USA. I'm here now with Karen Baldwin, the reigning Miss Universe, and this is one of the sets right here that you're going to see on the Miss Universe pageant from St. Louis on July 11th. Tell us about it, Karen. Yes, the outstanding designer, Don Shirley, has given us this preview look, showing the contestants in, in front of a huge globe of lights. In the background here is an astronaut's view of Earth from space. Have you been thinking a lot about that upcoming pageant night, huh? I have been, but right now all I can think about is who is going to be the new Miss USA tonight. I think we all are. It's very exciting, and we're going to find out who she is when we come back after this word from Crest. 
It just doesn't seem a year ago that a lovely young lady from Cabot, Arkansas, delighted us all with her description of how she spent her time back home. Now that young woman is about to conclude her reign as Miss USA. We salute Terry Utley and invite her now to take her traditional walk and deliver her words of farewell. Here is our reigning Miss USA, Terry Utley. to the title of Miss USA, but I will keep forever the memory of the experiences, the friends, and the challenges that the last year has brought me. In that time, I feel I have grown as a person, and I only hope that I'm able to continue to mature as time goes on. To my family, friends, and loved ones, my deepest gratitude for their support. To my successor, my sincere best wishes for the year ahead. And to everyone who has been so kind to me in the past year, thank you all from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, Terry Utley. I have in my hand the final computer tabulation listing our four runners-up and our new Miss USA. These results have been reviewed by representatives of the international accounting firm of Ernst & Winnie. Before I read it, I want to say on behalf of everyone associated with the pageant that we would be proud and happy to have any one of you five ladies reign as Miss USA next year. Now, I wish you all luck. I shall begin with the fourth runner-up. The fourth runner-up is Miss North Dakota. Congratulations, Miss North Dakota. The third runner-up is Miss Louisiana. The second runner-up is Miss South Carolina. Congratulations. Both of you step down here, please. Now, one of you is about to become Miss USA. The other will be the first runner-up, and that's a very important position because if for any reason Miss USA cannot fulfill her obligation for a year, then the first runner-up becomes Miss USA. It happened just three years ago. Now, I am going to announce the name of the first runner-up and then Miss USA. The first runner-up is Miss Texas, Miss California. She's Miss USA. The cash awards and all the magnificent prizes are hers. And ahead is her trip to St. Louis for the Miss Universe pageant in July. And as your predecessor, Terry Utley, reads the Miss USA creed, step right out here and show everyone how happy you are to be Miss USA. States in the Miss USA pageant, in order to further the cause of peace, justice, and mutual understanding, do solemnly dedicate ourselves to the highest ideals of sportsmanship, friendship, and goodwill among all the people of the United States. of California, Los Angeles, and she hopes to be a dentist someday.
She's a green-eyed blonde, stands 5 feet 10 inches tall, and weighs 125 pounds. Julie's hobbies include aerobics, cross-country running, and jazz. On behalf of Julie Hayek of Westwood, California, our new Miss USA is Bob Barker saying good night, everybody. screens on the night of July 11th when she represents the United States in the Miss Universe pageant televised live from St. Louis, Missouri on CBS. This is Joan Van Ark saying thank you all for being with us tonight here in Knoxville and we'll look forward to your joining us in St. Louis. Good night. Remember to join us on Monday, July 11th for the Miss Universe pageant live from St. Louis, Missouri. Of this program were pre recorded. The best